وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. And continue on with our talk, how to keep your slate clean. We talked yesterday about one of the self-cleaning mechanisms that we have as Muslims, and that is the salat. The salat helps you to keep your slate clean. It erases sins. As the Prophet وسلم, gave the metaphor, or gave an example, the parable of a river being in front of your door and you bathe in the river five times a day. He said, Would there be any sin left on you after you bathed in the river five times a day? He said, So likewise, the five salat, praying five salat a day, will help to remove sin just as water bathing in a bathing in uh, something four times or uh, five times a day will help to remove uh, the dirt. So notice how the Prophet وسلم, likened the Salat to water and the one who prays to the one who bathes in the water. And in actuality, we learn how to perfect our Salat. It will prevent us from sin anyway. When we learn how to perfect our salat, it will help to prevent us from sin anyway. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, in the salata tenha an al wal munkar. That salat prevents you from sinful and disobedient acts. Another mechanism that will help the believer clean his slate is through wudu, making wudu. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned in an authentic hadith that was collected in Sahih Muslim on the authority of Abu Hurairah who said that the Prophet said that كان يبطش أو بطشت يداه مع الماء أو مع آخر قطر الماء فإذا غسل رجليه خرجت خرجت كل خطيئة مشتها رجلاه مع الماء أو آخر قطر قطر الماء حتى يخرج حتى يخرج نقيا من الذنوب. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said that whoever performs no believing servant or Muslim performs wudu and washes his face except that when he washes his face that with every drop of water that comes off of his face that is the sins dropping off of him that is a result of him looking at something that he had no business looking at until the last drop of water falls off of his face subhanallah this religion is so easy so beautiful this religion, subhanAllah, that when you make wudu, you commit sin with your eyes. You commit sin with your eyes by looking at things that you have no business looking at. The Prophet ﷺ said that when you make wudu, for every drop of water that falls off of your face, those are the sins that are falling off with every drop of water until the last drop of water falls off of your face. SubhanAllah. So as you make wudu and you see the water coming off your face, count your sins falling off of your face. He said, and when he washes his hands with every drop of water that falls from his hands, that is the sins that are dropping off of him from the sins that he has committed with his hands. We commit sin all day long with our hands, punching keys on the keyboard, going to websites that we have no business going to, touching the hands of people that we have no business touching, be it women, be it other things. We're touching things, doing, committing sin with our hand. We're pointing at people that we have no business pointing at in the a, in a form of backbiting. We're doing so many sins with our hands that with every drop of water when we make wudu, for every drop of water that falls off of your hand, these are the sins that are falling off of you with the, all the way into the last drop of water. He said, and when he washes his feet 
when he washes his feet, then every sin that he committed with his feet, then with every drop of water, the sins are falling off of him until the last drop of water. The Prophet وسلم, said at the end of the hadith, Hatta yakhruja min al wudu naqiyan min al dhurub. He said, until the person finishes making wudu and there's no sin on him. <coughs> no sin on him. This is the beauty of Islam. The religion is so easy. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it so easy for us to rid ourselves of sin. And this is one of the ways that you keep your slate clean is by making wudu. And this doesn't have to be wudu for the obligatory salah. This could be any wudu. This could be wudu for you making sunnah prayers. This would be wudu for you just feeling tired and you get up and make wudu. This could be wudu that you make for uh, being angry and you just decide to go make wudu. This could be wudu for anything. Just the fact that you are making wudu, these are the things that are happening as a result. So you finish making wudu and you have no sin on you. This is another way to keep your slate clean. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says at the end of the ayat for wudu, وَمَا يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ لِيَجْعَلَ عَلَيْكُمْ مِنْ حَرَجٍ وَلَكِي يُرِيدُ أَيْ لِيُطَهِّرَكُمْ وَلِيُتِمَّ نِعْمَتَهُ عَلَيْكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ Allah says at the end of the ayat of wudu that Allah does not will to place any hardship or difficulty on, on you, but Allah only wants to purify you. We talked about yesterday, the word purification doesn't just mean purifying you from physical dirt, but also purifying you from your sins. Purifying you from your sins. But Allah does not wish to place or will to place any hardship on you, but Allah only wills to purify you and to complete his favor upon you so that perhaps you may be grateful. Perhaps you may be grateful. And the Prophet Sallallahu didn't specify whether or not this was the wudu for the obligatory prayer or sunnah prayer or anything else. So it should be left general, just as the Prophet Sallallahu left it general. One more, we'll cover one more, one more mechanism by which the believer can purify himself from sin and keep his slate clean is through the brotherhood and sisterhood of Islam. The love and compassion that we have for one another as Muslims is so powerful that it can remove sin from the believer. Did you know that? The brotherhood of Islam, the sisterhood of Islam, the love that we have for one another is so powerful that it is enough to remove the sins that we commit. The Prophet Sallallahu mentioned an authentic hadith, إِنَّ الْمُؤْمِنْ إِذَا لَقِيَ الْمُؤْمِنْ فَسَلَّمَ عَلَيْهِ وَأَخَذَ بِيَدِهِ فَصَافَحَتْهُ تَتَنَاثَرَ تَتَنَاثَرَ خَطَايَاهُمْ كَمَا يَتَنَاثَرَ أَوْرَاقِ الشَّجَرِ وفي رواية عند أحمد قال إلا غفر لهما قبل أن يتفرقا the Prophet Sallallahu said, No believer, no believer meets another believer and then grabs his hand and shakes his hand except that the sins fall off of him just like the leaves fall off of a tree. And another narration that was collected in the Muslim Imam Ahmed, he said, إِلَّا غُفِرَ لَهُمَا قَبْلَ أَنْ يَتَّفَرَّقَا and no two believers meet each other and stick out their hands and shake each other's hands except that the sins fall off of them as long as they are shaking hands until they are forgiven for their sins before they depart from one another. You are forgiven for your sin before you even depart from one another. Subhanallah what more can we ask for? Now when you meet another Muslim and you shake their hand, sins are falling off of you for as long as you shake the person's hand until before you, are, before you depart from one another, you are forgiven for your sins. SubhanAllah. 
And subhanAllah, you'll still find that even though we know this, we'll still allow these opportunities to pass us by. We'll see Muslims from a distance and we'll say, Salaam Alaikum. You know, put your hand on your chest, Salaam Alaikum. Instead of walking over to the brother and shaking his hand, I want to get this reward. I want to get my sins removed. Let me shake your hand, brother. No, it's an honor to shake your hand. We make it as a privilege for you to shake my hand because you got to walk over to me and shake my hand because I'm important. I'm special. So you need to walk over to me and shake my hand as opposed to you looking at it as it's an honor for me to walk over to you and shake your hand because by doing so, I'm getting my sins forgiven. As there was a narration that Umar bin al-Khattab he saw Ali bin Abi Talib walking by and Ali didn't give him the salam. So Umar felt un uneasy. Here it is, Ali bin Abi Talib is younger than me. I'm, I'm older than him. In our society, I was more reputable than he was. You walk past me, you give me the salam. So this happened again. So Umar didn't say anything, so Umar gave him the salam first. Salam alaikum. So then it happened again. Umar passed by Ali. Ali didn't give him the salam. And Umar felt uneasy for the second time. The third time it happened, Umar said, okay, enough is enough. This is the third time this young guy walked past me. I understand he's the Prophet's cousin. I understand he was the first male to believe in the Prophet I get it, but I'm older than you. I'm well respected in this community and you're walking past me for the third time not giving me the salam first. So Umar went to the Prophet Sallallahu and told him, what's with your cousin, man? What is with your cousin? He walked past me three times and did not give me the salam first. What is with your cousin? The Prophet Sallallahu called Ali and said, why is it that you walk past Umar, your elder, and you don't give him the salam first? Ali radiallahu this shows you the fiqh, even of the youth of the Sahaba. It has so much understanding of this religion. Ali said, oh Messenger of Allah, I heard you say, I heard you say that whoever, when a Muslim meets another Muslim, whoever gives the greeting of salam first, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will build for him a mansion in paradise. He says, so the reason why I didn't give Umar the salam first because I wanted Umar to have that mansion in paradise by giving me the greeting first. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. He said, I wanted Umar to have that mansion in paradise. So as a result of that, when I walked past him, I didn't say anything to him first because I wanted him to initiate the salam because I wanted him to have that mansion in paradise. Subhanallah. This shows you the, the, the youth, even the young people in the community. Our youth, our, ref our youth are a reflection of the adults. <laughs> you get what you deserve. If our youth are disrespectful in our society, then that's just a reflection of what we deserve as adults. If our youth are disrespectful, they have no respect for the elders, they're this, they're that, they have no manners, and that's just a reflection of the adults in the community. Just like the leadership in our community. Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala said that people get the exact leadership over them that they deserve. The people get the leadership that they deserve. We're always crying for better leadership, but we haven't done anything as a people to be better, to deserve better leadership. When the student is ready, <laughs> the teacher will appear. When people are ready for better leadership, better leadership will appear. When people want their children to behave differently in society, then they have to become better as adults. You can't be hypocritical. You don't pray. You smoke, you disrespect the religion, and then you expect your children to be the best Muslims that have ever walked the face of the earth. You gotta be kidding me. 
You have got to be kidding me. And the same thing applies even with non-Muslims. They complain about how disrespectful their youth are. Walking around with their pants sagging, tattoos, foul language. They use, you know, profanity at such a young age. But then look at what the adults are doing. <laughs> look at what the adults are doing. What did you expect to produce? A generation of mannerable, honorable children? You got to be kidding me. So the point that I'm making is that we don't extend ourselves seeing shaking one another's hands as an honor. As an honor. So even sometimes as an adult, you walk into a masjid and you see some young people in the masjid, walk over to them and shake their hands. Because when a believer meets another believer and shakes their hands, for as long as you shake the person's hand, sin is falling off of you. Until you will be forgiven for your sins before you even depart from one another. Before you even depart from one another. This is another way to keep your slate clean. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam tasliman kathira. Wa subhanaka lahumu wa bihamdik wa ashadu an la ilaha illa ant astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.